Good morning. How are the boys doing? Welcome to Breakfast with the Boys. It's episode three. Jack Gotzel and Jay Guacamole. We are here breaking down another crazy week. I mean, I know we're in the middle of a pandemic and everybody's locked up at home, either going crazy or just on the computer. But it seems like every week we come, there's just a fire agenda. Like the world is a, is a burning metropolis. I want to get the sad stuff out of the way right off the hop hank aaron passed away you know uh broke uh, <laughs> babe ruth's home run record um absolutely was pivotal uh not the first to break the color barrier but certainly you know when he broke that home run record and seeing the standing ovation he got in like the south in the united states it was like almost like a, a historic moment for the country um the last time i saw him in the news they showed him getting his covid 19 vaccine and then he passed away I, i'm not saying that's why uh obviously uh, or i would love like, to know uh venti's thoughts on that one yeah our conspiracy venti would, would certainly have something to say about i've got that, but... venti's conspiracy thoughts he, he does <laughs> think it's covid or the uh, i mean i'm not i'm not willing to, i'm not willing to <laughs> i'm not either there. I won't the go there personally. The conspiracy rabbit hole of Hank Aaron. Um, that's not where I'm willing to go down. If we want to talk about lizard people or something like, or like <laughs> um, the Illuminati, like count me in. I'll talk about that till the cows come home. But like, yeah, like we're going to let Hank Aaron chill on this one. Um, yeah. One of the greatest baseball players to ever do it. Probably king of the Without home run. I don't think there was any bean back then. He wasn't all juiced up on the bean like Mark McGuire and Bonds and slamming Sammy Sosa. So like for me, he's the best pure home home run hitter probably of all time the most valuable thing i probably own is a hank Aaron signed baseball i mean the guy was just an absolute legend yeah how do you have that ball well my dad gave it to me oh that's pretty cool <laughs> is it just in mint condition uh i think so nice nice that's a good ball that's a good ball to have yeah for me hank Aaron's kind of one of those icons for baseball obviously you have you know, you know, Babe Ruth, you got Ted Williams, and then right there's next to him is Hank Aaron. So, 100%. you know, it, it's tough seeing him pass, but, you know, hope I think every single generation that moves on is going to read something, you know, about Hank Aaron without a doubt. No, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. So, um, Jack, this kind of ties into two different things I wanted to get into. We're going to start at the beginning. Um, the uh, end of uh, the, uh, the Women's Hockey League versus uh, – versus Erica Nardini that has been dominating um the Twitter headlines the NWHL uh you know the the funny thing is is like a couple players were just on her podcast yes. heading into Lake Placid and then she's there and like they're blowing it up but like all the views and the same people Jack how funny was it when Nardini puts out that video and it's like for my haters and she shows like all the people like ripping on her but kind of showing how when she got there before like messaging it out there was like only like a thousand views and then like after she messaged it out there was like 30,000 stuff like that right and then she like montaged their messages kind of like what happened to Jack after his cold Tom Brady takes this week um uh, so it was great though because from the last week's episode uh, attack of the simp monsters um the simp monsters that were going at her like there was there were very 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 familiar faces jack yeah attack of the simp monsters or mutants too i mean it's so stupid this is a female ceo supporting women's hockey and you want to attack her for supporting women's hockey like how stupid are these people like for real like i mean she's trying to grow the game and these idiots want to want to go and attack her because of the barstool brand which ever says it's it's sexist it's racist they can't point to a single that's sexist or race about it as soon as you ask them uh like well that's not <laughs> that's not necessarily true portnoy has said a couple bad things now listen in what, 2011? You no, know, exactly. But when you're doing comedy and you're on camera every single day, like, man, you're going to miss. Like, you're going to say something that you think is okay. The only thing that, like, you know, I, I even saw the one the one story a guy put me in. It was like a 14-second um, video. And the, the, it had to do with, like, a rape joke or something, right? And it's like, 
I, it was a 14 second clip. I don't know the context. Um, the thing with Kaepernick though, and the, like calling him a terrorist and saying that his hair looks like ISIS and that if he wrapped it in a turban, <sighs> like that's what he said. Like he would look like he's in ISIS. Like I would not be cool with any of us saying that. But that said, what has an Erica Nardini ever done? She's done nothing but support that league. All those things were pre when she came. They put her in place to clean up those things because they were never going to make it to where they were making those kind of mistakes. How are, are they perfect? Nobody's perfect, man. And these assholes on, on, on hockey Twitter and, and the NWA are, um, and the WNHL, like, or sorry, the NWHL, um, like beat writers, like they're hurting the game of women's hockey in the name of like pretending to be woke yeah, they refuse to focus on the game. They the, always yeah, have this not, political agenda. Exactly. They're not thinking about the game itself. And now if she gets involved and you start getting 30,000 views as opposed to 2,000 views, like that's going to be substantial advertising dollars. They already work with beer companies like Coors and they already have other massive alcohol brands that they could probably have went to and said, hey, we got a team in women's hockey. You guys always say you like diversity, this and that. Put up the money, and they probably yeah. would. But They're guess what? They just keep looking for a fight, and they keep That's getting it. in their own way. And when the league folds after that bullshit statement they put out, because I'm done defending that league after that, um, after they decided to basically shit on the growth of it in the name of keeping people like uh, Ingrammy and uh, that Sam girl, she's just absolutely terrible. Um, I saw that, that, that I'm not even going to say her name. She's so irrelevant, but like, Jack, you weren't replying to any of the scent monsters. So it didn't no, get as bad, man. but like the one girl was like, she had to say like two or three messages to you, like just begging for attention these people yeah she's like i can't believe this is still here it's like yeah it's still here because it's still true so i ain't removing it yeah and, and what yeah, did you, you say you said something pretty funny you probably had one of the hottest tweets i've ever seen y yesterday i was on break and i look on twitter and all of a sudden i just see your tweet blowing up you already have about 20 quote tweets after like five minutes of posting it and the sim monsters are just don't full force and each one of them you know i think one of them was talking about they posted a, a barstool article and mancuso you even responded and you were like relax it's it's a joke you know whatever that may have been i think each one of those people they probably have the human body has what 206 bones in their body they have 205 because they're missing a funny bone it's all yeah. just fun and games stop partying <laughs> barstool or something ridiculous like that bro exactly these people think they're so like good they like it's such an act it's so fake like yeah they, they like scour the internet what can i be offended by like yeah man how and do it's you like, live like that but, and, how and, do these girls think they're helping hockey by 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 sending these militant fucking brainless fucking idiots they're not and from, and, from my and just perspective embarrassing themselves these people are fucking idiots i can't state that enough like i'm sorry i know it's a little early to be using this kind of language but like they're, they're like i read their tweets and and you see the influence barstool has in the money and the nwhl just pandering to these people with 642 followers it's like are you guys fucking game. stupid are you trying to fold the league wake the fuck up for, for me i don't really follow the nwhl and you know i don't no. know when i will but the only reason it was semi-relevant to me is because of nardini she would continue to post things about it, continue to put herself in that public figure, that public icon for the sport. And the fact that people would, you know, like you said, like you said, come at her like that, it's ridiculous. And I don't even want to keep following it because of it. No, man. Oh, if I were her, I wouldn't put out another tweet to them no. after that bullshit Make statement. Irrelevant. She kind of hinted that if they don't let her buy a team, she might think about starting her own league. Oh, oh my God, awesome. she should. Yeah. If she started her own league, I would go to the mayor of Niagara Falls. Hollywood Jimmy Dio Daddy and I would be like, bro, get some of these rich Italians up in here. Like, let's get one of these leagues. Like, let's make a fun league. Like, you could do like Toronto, Hamilton here, New York, Boston. Like, you could make it work, man. She could do it. And she's got the money to do it. She's got the power to do it. And she's got the influence to do it. And, it's and the like, players bro, like her. Guess what? Mutant yep. Simps, the players like her. They I know. Her podcast. Did, did you see? No, but the funny thing is, is that one of the girls that was on Spit and Chicklets or or, or Nardini's podcast was like, I back my teammate no matter what. The original girl who set this off was only playing her second ever NWHL game, and she just thought she could speak for the entire league. 
Yeah, and, and she did get backed by her teammates. But then there's uh, other girls. I mean, I saw some girls on Nardini's post too. Also been like, were like, say it louder for the people in the back. Like, yes. They, they ride with Nardini because she yes. is supporting them. She's giving Dude, them the best support they've had awesome. out there. Dude, they've never had that. I, I've been covering since last year. I had my own cancel situation. I, I mean, I, I could go into the story. I mean, most people know it. I, I basically helped co-found the Boston Pride's coverage with the diehards. Oh, and, and some of them were in my uh, my mentions today. Those fucking idiots Lord. were there too. What were they saying? <laughs> Oh, they were just liking comments. They're, they're oh yeah, they, they always the, they don't just have the like No, 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 no. Keyboard exactly. warriors. See, Golden A's trying to be uh, trying to be an MMA guy now. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about there either. He should worry about only working out his biceps and being five foot four. That guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I can't stand these people, man. Like they've made the game of hockey almost. I, I don't even, I don't even feel the same when I watch the Bruins anymore because of these people. Like it's almost made me like, I almost hate the game now. Like these people are so unlikable. They're so unlikable that I've almost like, I'm almost ready to stab hockey in the back. There's always something to complain about. Always something to go after. Yeah, man. It just Have doesn't fun. stop. Watch the game. It's just become political. Yeah. Oh man, it's politics. And it's like, I don't, I got, I used to go to sports to get away from politics. That's why, like, I didn't care why I, I didn't understand why I should say like to, to even look into why Cal Colin Kaepernick was kneeling. I didn't care that he knelt. Like I, I have no, I have no affiliation to like respect for the anthems and stuff. If it were up to me, I would take away the anthem. So that way, like the hardos about the anthem are upset and the people that need her in it are upset. I think that's when, you know, you're doing the most fair thing is when both sides are upset. Um, but yeah, like I, I just didn't like it cause it started to bring the bullshit into the, like sports and people can start bickering. And it's like, that stuff's always going to lead to bickering, but you know, what is one thing I think that is universally agreed on was that Godzilla Verse Kong um, movie looks so awesome. Like, I don't care where you sit on anything in the world. If you watched that trailer that just dropped of Godzilla versus King Kong, like that looks fucking who, awesome. Who do you got winning battle? All right. Well, so it's got to be Godzilla, Kong, no? King yeah. Kong definitely has the reach advantage. He's definitely better if the fight goes to the ground, but standing up, and I don't think it gets to the ground. I think Godzilla takes him out standing up. Can he it, breathe fire? Okay. Isn't all that irrelevant yeah. when you have Just a flamethrower out of you? Opposable thumbs, baby. Godzilla all day. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, opposable thumbs might be the difference. <laughs> Jay Guacamole, that's a really good point. Opposable I, thumbs. Doesn't he got like short arms, though? Godzilla isn't. He's he not like a T Rex. Oh, he's not a T Rex, bro. No, he's like oh, a big he has, old. I don't even. Guy. I don't even know if big I can ass dragon. Down the reach but in the trailer, in the trailer, Kong comes over top and catches him, and you see him fucking smack him. So who knows? Like that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the reach <laughs> advantage for Godzilla. It's going to be action packed. I mean, Kevin Durant is on our side too because he quote tweeted and said he doesn't see Godzilla losing this matchup either. I and, and he would know. Yeah, and I mean, he knows all about losing big matchups. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Until he ran and joined the Warriors. <laughs> yeah. Join the Warriors, joins the Nets, and just brings everyone to him there too. Yeah, and they still lost to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like, and oh, now he's now joke. he's joining Godzilla, another favorite. Get out of here, Kevin Durant. Uh, you can take the player out of a team, but you can't take the loser out of the player, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Now, um, can you take photos posted online away from certain areas? Because he, oh. Kelly and Conway, do we want to talk about this? I mean, we kind of have to. What a garbage bag fucking human being. Disgusting. Um, her daughter, listen, her daughter drags her through the mud. Her daughter clearly um, doesn't like the fact that she worked for Trump being young in this social media day. Like, you listen, like the people on that side always claim to be anti-bullying, but like, if you're a Donald Trump person, they're going to bully the fuck out of you, mm -hmm. right? So like, she probably was getting bugged about it. So she makes these TikToks nonstop going at her mom. And to me, it's like, have you ever seen them? Like, there's like straight up like domestic shit going on in there. Like, I'm pretty sure like Kelly Conway like throws shit at her while she's filming her and, and everything. So I guess like last night in the night, she posted a picture of her 16 year old daughter mm -hmm. of a photo her daughter had taken of her like topless. 
Yeah, and then she tried deleting it shortly after, but as soon as you post something, it's there. People are going to grab it, and she, you know, she's probably in the hottest seat of all time right now. Dude, I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to get the simp monsters upset here, but why yeah. isn't she arrested yet? Like, I feel like if a girl's father did that, he would be in cuffs. Oh, he already. would be. Yeah, yeah that would already. Like, why happen. isn't she arrested? Like, like you can't post pictures like that's like not only is that like i'm pretty sure like revenge porn that's underage man like you sent that out to the world that is not okay and it's your daughter why the hell would you No, exactly like why would you you even do that like listen if you want to embarrass her and say the story and be like you guys are are listening to a girl that does stuff like this like if you have to be one of those moms where you say what happened that's completely different but to put the photo out there is disgusting and i think she should be in jail and then a classic, try, you know, them trying to do a cleanup job after saying, oh, I think my mom was hacked and we're going to take a break from social media for a while. It's like, get that shit out of here. Yeah, you can't just do that. After you do something that big, you don't get to be like, oh, it was a mistake. I was hacked. We're uh, the, the John Jones defense. I was hacked. It, it doesn't <laughs> ever work. Yeah, man, I don't know. It's it, it, that is such a bad situation. And, uh, and I hate to say it, but like, if that was her dad, he'd be arrested by now. And I don't care what they're, oh, we're going off social media. Like, I don't care if this led to the thing that has them in a better place for some weird wee reason or something like that. Like, she should still like you, you can't do that. Like that girl's 16. You can't fucking do that. Not okay. Not okay at all. Think speaking of that president um (laughs) he never fails to just you can't help you can't help but laugh so when joe biden was the the president elect but biden or trump was saying oh the election's rigged and you know there was people pulling ballots out of their assholes or whatever he was saying um it it was like (laughs) Joe Biden came out and he's like, I would do like these briefings that it said like from the office of the president elect, like, which isn't real. Like, that's not a real office. Like he just decided to, to find an office called the office of the president elect. So Donald Trump has now registered the office of the former president and is going to be using it to still do like advocacy. And it's basically going to become like, it sounds like, is it like a political lobbying firm or something? Like- yeah, basically. And it's right off the golf course in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like name and a oh, billion it's based dollar on, it's, home. it's right out of Mar-a-Lago too. That's where he's yeah. still running it out of. Dude, that's so funny. Like, People thought it was over with that guy. Like he's gonna go away for a bit. He's gonna golf. He's gonna chill. Like he's you know, Trump he pardoned. A genius. I mean, yo, dude. Like, there's no doubt that he's quick. He's so fast. Dude. Well, like, now he can get right off the 18 years old. Dude, he can go right from 18 right into the desk, dude. They'll have it set up right at the 18th floor. He'll come out. There'll be a layer of sweat. His orange yep. will be running down his face. He'll be like, Joe Biden is ruining this economy. He's, he's going to be impeached for like a second time. He won't even be able to run. I can't wait to see who like they just have run, but like have him calling the shots. Like he's just going to start like his own like shadow government or something like that. Where like no matter who, like, you know that this isn't where it stops either. Like, you know, nope. he's either going to try to make like a new parlor, which is the platform that got shut down by everybody, by the other. Uh, companies for their not having like a policy like to monitor behaviors online and uh, they claimed that like the insurrection or whatever they claim happened at the Capitol was like plotted on parlor but I'm pretty sure that all took place on Facebook <laughs> but like whatever right like they don't want them on there but you know he's gonna like either make his own social media platform or like a brand new party or something and it, the shit show is gonna continue well we he can't join my show. party I'm in the I don't care party anymore because both sides suck yeah so. man it's so oh, annoying the IDC nice <laughs> yeah the IDC is one of the great company uh, one of the great parties to belong to it's funny to laugh at both uh, dude the hardos on both sides are so funny they both think that their person who's in politics which is legitimately just a job where you lie um, yep. they legitimately think like their guy is a hundred percent right on everything it's like nobody's a hundred percent right on everything you fucking idiots besides chuck norris yeah nobody besides chuck norris is right about everything. did you guys see that chuck norris i swear to god chuck norris was at the capitol what 
he didn't do the like he didn't run into the building but some people posted photos with him at like the 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 like stop the steal march like chuck norris was there like in donald trump support oh no does the i don't care party have to issue a statement now <laughs> i'm worried man i'm worried i feel like i'm feel like maybe like chuck norris wasn't the best like example there after Tom Brady's huge weekend, and then you have people coming out and saying, don't ever forget Tom Brady had a MAGA hat in his locker. It's like, shut the fuck up. The guy's the best quarterback of all time. Just one Yeah, that doesn't team. change one the of the Super Bowl. Super, One of the uh, Sim Mutants had that as his uh, Twitter handle. It was like, uh, Tom Brady had a MAGA hat, I remember. Oh, my God. Like, the worst people. Me. It was Dude, the yeah, that's fine. You Like, 68 people don't mean anything to Tom Brady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't stress enough how crazy these people are. Speaking of crazy, it's been a year since Kobe Bryant passed away, boys. That terrible helicopter crash with his daughter, um, another player on the team, another young girl, and uh, another parent and a coach or something like that. I mean, more than just Kobe was lost that day, but let's be honest, the legacy he left behind in basketball. And then like, you know, he did that short film in 2018 and, and, and won like an Academy award. Like the guy was just, he was everything he touched turned to gold. Yeah. Like exactly, man. The guy had a golden thumb, just everything he touched turned to gold. Um, seemed to be at a really good point in his life too. He was always, yeah. uh, always looking happy and shit man and it's like i can't believe that was always a year, already a year like that's that's mm -hmm. insane yeah and his daughter too who looked i mean <laughs> she had that same mamba mentality like absolutely yeah man competitive. it's makes you sick just to think about that like i mean i saw the family ask them not to do any like big tributes yeah. this year and it's like yeah man this year's been nuts it's gone no by tributes so fast. to only show you know good memories if you can just stay away from the crash like don't post that shit and i totally agree with them yeah exactly man nobody needs to see that like no but the year flew by it feels like yesterday i still remember i was actually sitting in, in this very room seeing on twitter the updates of it happening and i couldn't believe it um, from my from my perspective, you know, I'm a big Boston Celtics fan, so all I have is memories going back and forth. Uh, Celtics versus Lakers, Pierce versus Kobe. Uh, obviously, we had the finals game versus then we won and lost. Uh, yep. But they'll, I'll, I'll always cherish them in my life. And even after that, seeing Kobe age, uh, kind of get a couple injuries, but he still was, in, you know, dominant on the court in every aspect. Dropped and 60 in his last game. like 60 in his last game, got two numbers retired by the Lakers. Um, you know, just legend, nothing man. but... Yeah, nothing but memories. Like, who else shows up at 7 a.m. for practice for an 8 p.m. game? No, and exactly. I, I'm a guy that, like, you couldn't pay me to watch basketball. But Kobe Bryant, it's just like he was such a competitor. And, like, mm -hmm. I always respected that. He was one of the, like, NBA players that I actually did, like, tune in to watch. And, like, I, I did care about him because he was just that good of a competitor. He was, like, that that Tiger Woods level of focus. like That Tom Brady level. Or Tom Brady, yeah. That Tom Brady level of focus. Tom Brady exactly. in his prime before he fell off the cliff. I, he's, he's After still... he led the league in touchdowns and is in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. You know, three interceptions. Two were Evans' fault, I think. One, no, one he threw over and it, it did hit Evans' hands, but it was like he ran 20 the wrong, feet But he ran head. the wrong route, though. He didn't even break out like on the one. Like, it was terrible. It was a bad pass by Brady. Get over it. No. Brady's back, baby. That's all that matters. He has more yeah. chance of making a Super Bowl than Steph Curry does making a three. Oh, I like it. I like it, Jay Guacamole. You know what else I like today was uh, we had, we're going to go to Serie A here for a little uh, Italian football, a little soccer Ooh. action. Hey, what about, what about you? Forget about it. Um, there, you know, you got uh, Inter Milan, AC Milan, huge rivalry. Two former teammates at Manchester United, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Romelu Lukaku, who is a ginormous man, started trading words back and forth. They like came face to face, were like headbutting each other. And then the war of words broke out. And because there was no fans in the stadium, you could hear it all. Um, Zlatan ended up getting a red card. Only... Uh, only uh, a yellow card, I think, for Lukaku, which is crazy because he was going nuts. That was insane. Like, that was nuts. They went right head to head. Yep. Oh, yeah, man. And, like, like he was telling them 
you could hear Zlatan yelling him, go do your voodoo shit. Like, I don't even know what that means, bro. But like, he whatever he noise? said, because like, because Ukaku was like, fuck your wife or something. He yelled, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, well, they know each other, too. Well, like, dude, they really were well, teammates so. at United. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, those are like personal chirps. They know how to get in each other's head. Oh, yeah, man. And Zlatan was just sitting there laughing. I mean, Zlatan's a black belt, right? So, like, he, like, isn't afraid. Like, Lukaku's a big man. Lukaku told him, like, you could, when you could translate what he said to him in Italian, I'm pretty, like, he's going to get suspended, man. He told him he was going to shoot him in the head. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, bro. Like, it got that intense. Like, did you see the players and everything getting in the middle of it? Like, Lukaku was ready to, like, whatever Zlatan said to him to set him off must have been really bad. Well, Zlatan's so good at that. I mean, he pissed off the entire United States of America, which was hilarious because I hate the MLS because I do think it's minor league soccer. But Zlatan (laughs) basically said it's minor league soccer. You have, like, your stupid playoff system, which is dumb. He and he's like, I'm I'm going back to play real soccer again. <laughs> and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone, and everyone dude, lost their mind. Him and Ronaldo, like he's like 40 or 39 or something like that. Ronaldo's like 38 or 39, and they're like the two leading scorers in that league still. It's crazy. Those guys, like Zlatan yeah. is the man, dude. He scored so many hilarious goals. I thought he was gonna like retire with the galaxy and like become like a movie star, but he just went there and then was like, This league sucks. I'm and he <laughs> called the coach a little bitch. Yeah, oh bro, he doesn't stop. Dude, he took out like a page ad in the LA Times and just said, You're welcome, like for going there. Yeah, I I know. <laughs> He's the best, dude. All hail Zlatan. He pissed off all of them. All hail Zlatan. The clip we watched was, was better than any WWE promo has been lately. Oh, bro, he's hilarious, man. He's yeah. one of the great athletes. He's polarizing his shit. I was telling Guac J this before we recorded. Like, Zlatan reminds me of, like, MJF in, like... <laughs> Yeah, oh, like yeah. the Burberry scarf AEW. on. AEW. Yeah, he's yeah. just like he knows the right thing to say to really just unwind. Speaking people. of AEW, I don't know if you guys saw the clip I posted. It was Chris Jericho trying to do the lion salt. Oh um, my god! He's oh. put on a listen. <laughs> I COVID love. <laughs> I love Chris Jericho. Like he he could stop wrestling tomorrow. Amazing. Go on the mic for WWE become their commentator. He could become one of the best sports commentators in the world. You can't teach charisma. Chris Jericho might be the most charismatic guy the WWE or wrestling has ever seen. That yep. lion salt looked like if I tried to do a lion salt <laughs> on the second row. I couldn't believe you pulled it off at the very <laughs> tail end of that. It, it almost looked like the other guy kind of rolled into it a little bit to help. Dude, I out. thought he was going to break his neck. I was like, and then, of course, like Twitter's just like the meanest place in the world. There is just a lot of Jericho fat jokes going on, and oh, and I feel it, bad watching it. I'm like I said, I'm glad he pulled it off, but nothing but props because the man uh, can control a crowd like no one I've ever seen before. No, I mean, exactly. When he comes in with his entrance and he's putting the mic out and the crowd singing. Oh hell yeah, man! He, AEW's Electric Factory. Tony Khan AEW's, is doing a good job. I think AEW is night and day with WWE. WWE has taken such a, a I think back step in ten years. AEW is better. It, yeah. It's um maybe that maybe the wrestling like the wrestlers aren't as talented as uh like like from a move standpoint and stuff like that as the WWE people, but the storyline story is better, yeah. and that's ninety percent. Like wrestling is soap operas for guys. Like yep. the story is almost as probably even in the attitude era, it was like the stories were almost bigger than the matches. Like, and now it's just like, they put all their time into like these guys who just like, nobody's a character anymore. Like AEW has characters. Like they got like broken Matt Hardy. He's like fucking weird. You got like Darby Allen, weird stings there, which is like a classic throwback. You know, you got like the inner circles, hilarious dark order, which was awesome. Uh, Um, boys, I don't know how we didn't have this on our agenda. UFC 257, all the hype. Conor McGregor comes back and wins the first round against Dustin Poirier. Comes up in the second round, gets his leg kicked in, and then gets murdered, knocked out. How did you guys think about that? I mean, I love McGregor. That really upset me to see him go down like that. But I think this is a case of this guy just needs to get fighting, man. Just get back in the ring. You can't be away and out of it for as long as he has been and think that you're just going to roll in there and hit a rolling Dustin Poirier like that. And I want to get your things, Jack, after Jake uh, Guacamole jumps in because – 
there's a lot of talk right now that Poirier and McGregor want to run it back right away. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, I want to talk first cause Jack's okay, going to go, go super in depth and I'm just a casual watcher here of MMA. Um, but I almost bet 300 bucks on McGregor. I really thought he was going to take that in kind of a, a instant heartbeat, no brainer. Um, and like I said, after round one, again, I'm thinking I'm riding high, glad I didn't place a bet. Um, but round two, just saw none of that coming. Uh, kind of seeing that leg get pushed in and just the, the brutality at the end, seeing him kind of against the cage and just couldn't get up, couldn't defend himself. He was like a little lost dog in the corner there. Um, it all kind of sucked, you know, um, just because I thought it was going to go on longer. But it was fun to watch. You know, unexpected is always good to see. I just wish it went on a little bit longer. Yeah, well, right when the fight started, you you saw how McGregor was moving. And right then, that was the first uh oh, quick. Like he's he's like set back in a boxing stance. He's not doing like his his tempo movement, uh, moving all over the place. And his leg was basically stationary. So Dustin Poirier was just taking wax at it, wax at it, wax at it, and finally he he got it. And then something burst. Yeah, yeah. McGregor yeah. was a sitting duck after that. And it's because he's so worried about boxing. He wants that boxing world title. He wants that fight with Pacquiao. And he overlooked Dustin Poirier. He fought Dustin Poirier. I know he did because he knew Poirier was a southpaw and he wanted to get ready for Pacquiao. Yeah, well, guess what? Now you lost to Poirier and Pacquiao's off the table. He's going to go fight Ryan Garcia now. Yeah. You, you blew it, buddy. You blew it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. The other thing we were with that fight too, was I've never seen McGregor so cordial kind of leading up to a fight. It's always been bad mouthing bashing, but they're, they're boys, they're friends. He donated McGregor donated his charity not too long before that fight. So it's McGregor, the father, he, he's, yeah. he's not a plumber's apprentice anymore. He's not as hungry. <laughs> I, he, he's playing in the sandbox with his kid. He, he's lost that edge. I saw it. Well, I said it uh, on our MMA show, Jack. Like, how mad can you be with, like, $150 million in the bank? Like, how <laughs> mad can you really be? I get it. Life's tough when you're a plumber's apprentice and you're fighting and you go and you win your first few fights and you don't get paid that much and you feel like garbage. You got you got kicked in the head, kicked in the ass. You got choked out almost. Like, that sucks. I get where you get the chip on your shoulder, that desire to be the best. Then you get to the top of the UFC mountain and Floyd Mayweather comes calling, tosses you a hundred million dollars because he knows you're going to blow it up. Cause he's like, you know, one of the greatest on the mic of all time. And then I don't know, man, it's like, he comes down from that. He's got tons of money. He gets off the rails. He launches proper 12, not only like, you know, I'm not a huge whiskey guy, but it's like, um, that's going to bring, you know, you got to do club appearances, bar appearances, things like that. And what are you going to be doing? Drinking the product, which leads to bad decision making. Um, but he needs to kind of get back and just he needs to fight another two or three times this year. Yep, Absolutely. And I, I think he's going to have a difficult fight next because I do think Poirier gets his wish. And I think he gets in there with Nate Diaz unless he can get Poirier to run it back. But Poirier is a tough matchup and Gaethje is a tough matchup. Unless McGregor wants to take a big step back and fight either Rafael Dos Anjos or Tony Ferguson, who I don't want to see Tony Ferguson fight anymore, to be honest. I think it's time for Tony to hang him up. I think he's going to get hurt out there. I I would love it if Tony Ferguson retired, and that's because I'm a Tony Ferguson fan and because I love Tony Ferguson. I don't want to see him go out like that. That was a lot of time saying Tony Ferguson in one sentence yeah. there. I felt like you said Tony Ferguson 600 times. I, Boys. It, we've made it through the agenda here. It's beautiful. Well, can I, I add so. one thing to the agenda? Add it. Because I just it just popped into my mind. You know, we're talking about the UFC. Yeah. What about Jake Paul versus Ben Askren? Oh, yeah. You got Jake Paul versus Ben Askren. I think Askren's you know, a very, very good wrestler. I think this is Jake Paul taking the easiest fight possible to say yep. that he fought a real fighter he thought he was king shit after knocking out nate robinson and many Washed people were NBA like bro league. like that's a fucking nba guy who was like the smallest guy in the league for years like that's not shit so then he calls out mcgregor and these other big guys and they're not going to give him the fight because they actually have respect for fighting um Askren, he's someone who's like okay i'm going to shut this guy up here's the thing not a good boxer i remember 
Jack, I think it was you were saying too, like they used to say like, oh, he has an unorthodox style. And then it just became like, yeah, it's unorthodox because it's not good boxing. <laughs> yeah, because it's awful. It was during the Damian Maya fight where he did a, a spinning back fist where all three of us could throw a faster spinning back fist than, than what he threw in a professional fight. But, yes. but that is what Jake Paul's doing. He's taking the loophole because he said it last night on Twitter. He said, this time you can't say I fought a YouTuber or a uh, NBA player. This time I'm fighting a, a professional fighter. You're fighting a professional grappler. You're not fighting a striker. You're fighting a grappler. You're still a bum. You'd still probably lose to an amateur boxer. You you have zero professional fights. Stop criticizing professional fighters after they lose because you've never had a professional fight. I I almost threw up when he said, well, I've had two professional boxing matches. I know. Already. I was like against like KSI's brother and like fucking and, and Nate Robinson, a uh, got an NBA guy trying to be a YouTube influencer and or something. Get the he, hell out of here. Even after he fights Ben Askren, he still has zero professional fights to his name. You're a bum, Jake Paul. Yeah, Askren isn't the guy that you need to be fighting to prove that you can fight a real fighter. Fight an actual boxer. Mm -hmm. Why does he not seem to want to fight a boxer? If you think you're so tough and you want to fight Askren, be a go, reason. In there, go into the octagon and prove it. But but you know what? At the end of the day, the kid's a, a hype machine. He's got the most like social media followers out of anybody. And uh, he's making big money fights and good for Askren because that's going to be a nice, uh, nice payday for him, guys. Um, and I'm still going to watch it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're both going to get sucked into watching it, guys. Breakfast with the Boys, episode three in the books. We got a special interview series coming this week. So we're going to have a little double episode. Week. Guys, have a good day. Start it off right. And if you're on Twitter, don't be a bird. Take care.